Hello and welcome back. So recently I have been playing with Rust and Wasm quite a lot and actually using it to render stuff on the screen and on the DOM rather than just using Rust for uh, performing number fetching stuff like doing some mathematical calculations and things like that. Um, so I recently used you to do some um, stuff of render things on this screen and actually using it as a front-end framework and use rust to write front-end code uh, which is pretty exciting um, now you is one of the frameworks um, there are a lot more now available but this is uh, you is one of the very first ones uh, for the rust that actually came out so here i have built a simple snake game um, just to get myself um, familiar with you and how it works and uh, it's pretty amazing and it's um, quite close to how uh, react works I mean at least as long as uh, uh, the component structure and things like that goes so it's basically um, so there is this component that you see um, this is one of the component um, in fact it's the only component in this uh, application but uh, the main just render is this component so that is basically the entry point so index.tsx or gsx or whatever files um, for react and it's just rendering this component and then this component is just simply a struct so basically in you there are two ways similar to react there are two ways to write components one is this um, struct way of uh, doing things which is equivalent to um, a react class based components um, if you remember those <laughs> but um, there is there is hook based uh, functional components where you can use hooks and things similar to react um, I have not given it a try but um, th to me this looked more natural um, as I used writing structs and uh, implementations in rust so that's why I went with the class based component equivalent in Rust, which is which are just structs. So basically how it works. Yeah, before that, let me let me run this application. So trunk serve. So basically uh, I'm using trunk to serve this application locally. So what it will do is just serve this index.html file. I already have uh, the CSS file attached. So it basically, it basically um, takes care of all of the styling and things like that. Um, so we have our server running locally. Okay, so we have our app running here. So it's basically a snake game. We have a grid. Um, which is at the moment 30 by 30 but um, I have I have the variable for it so it's basically a 30 by 30 grid so grid width and height so that's what you see here um, to start the game um, you simply oh okay you simply press um, the space bar and the game just starts so you just have to hunt for the for the food so a classic snake game but the performance and all of the um, things um, related to rendering it's all done uh, in the rust and the, everything is uh, pretty simple and i really enjoyed creating this so let's just go through the code uh, so basically in the beginning i'm just defining some variables for for all of my game um, so basically grid height and boundary thickness so boundary is basically this black line so if if this snake ever gets uh, in contact with this line the game is over so that is basically one um, well, one width uh, box here which is in black if you can see right here and then it, it counts your score as well so i have that um so basically this, this is this is this function is like the primary function here but we'll get back to it later so all these functions or, or this class-based component stores is a struct and this struct has x and y position of the head so head is basically uh, it, 
so this is basically at the moment we are just rendering the head which is basically this light green color so this is basically the head of the snake and then we have the current direction which direction is going is just an enum up down left right and then we have score pause and the basic stuff so body segments um this is another struct so body segment at the moment there is no body segment but as you eat uh, as your snake eats the food then you have a body segment uh, which is like this dark green color so that's what's stored in the in the state that's all basically and then you have to implement the component for for your um, for your struct so basically um, this uh, this has a view function that gets called every frame uh, or whenever the state is updated so this is basically the render equivalent of your class based component in in react if you if you if you can relate that uh, so basically that's what it's doing uh, and it, it has mainly two function um, you you define types so basically the types for your properties which are props this function doesn't take any props so you have a unit there um, and then you have message. So message is basically uh, sort of an event-based, you can say, uh, system for reactivity. So basically you send messages that trigger this update function and then the update will have that message and you can uh, perform state updates based on that message that was triggered. Um, and you have context available and you can use this context to uh, send and receive all of the message events. So at this point, I have a few message, which is one is game tick. Uh, so game tick is fired whenever. Um, so it's it's basically fired 60 uh, times a second. Uh, here's the calculation. Um, I'll get back to it in a moment. Um, but that's one of the event and then handle keyboard event, which is like key presses and things like that. And then restart game and pause. So these are basically some events that I sent um, in my game. So whenever the component is sort of mounted, um, this create function is called, and then there I just call my game tick function that returns a stream, and stream is sort of equivalent to uh, set interval in JavaScript, but it works differently. But um, if I go to the implementation of this get function, uh, get get tick, it basically calls this interval function every milliseconds that whatever. Um, I passed here so basically take time so every hundred milliseconds it calls this function uh, and then this function is then mapped to uh, here so that means so this these two lines basically means call uh, or basically send this message or tick event to this update function um, every hundred milliseconds so that's what these two lines are doing and then I'm basically just spawning uh, the head at a random position so basically whenever the game is started um, i just create a random uh, just select a random position uh, in my grid range and then spawn uh, my head or the head of the snake and then return this this, this uh, create function has to return the default state um, and that state is what we define uh, as a struct up there and then from there it's just basically some um, logic to uh, to render and then um, keep the state up to date uh, based on the events so if the if, if the game is paused um, i just return false so basically if you return false from this function it won't trigger a re-render so returning false so basically here i'm returning true that means whenever i'm done updating all of the state um, I just sent, uh, I just written true from this function, and this will trigger a re render, and the UI will be in sync with the uh, with the state, whatever it is. So that's basically what it means. And the rendering uh, basically is similar to React, but uh, there is obviously the Rust um, flavor to it. So since it's being used for um, for rendering here, so you have this HTML macro. Um, that you can use to return JSX like syntax, which is basically similar to JSX. Um, I uh, could not easily find a simple way built into the U to handle key presses, so I just uh, 
<laughs> use the trick to uh, do this tab index is equal to zero and then mount um, the uh, and then handle the key down presses on this div but the problem with this is uh, i just have to first focus this div um, so if i'm pressing right now i'm pressing the space bar it's not starting but i have to somewhere click in this div and then press um, and then the game starts so basically uh, you this this box you see so that's the downside but you can you can use window dot add event listeners equivalent here but i think you you need some external dependencies for that uh, but i just kept everything simple here um, so handle key down just sends the uh, sends the messages like i said so a key down message will get here uh keyboard event and then um, the handle key down if it's arrow key up key the down key whatever and then up, uh, i just update the direction and then since returning true here it will sync the state with the um, uh, with the ui so that is basically it. So you have to to apply different styles. We have this classes macro. Um, I'm just using it to uh, differentiate between the body and the head of the snake. Right here, the food, which is red, um, and the grid structure. Um, just just using uh, using a for loop for um, for all of the rendering of the grid. It's pretty basic. Uh, and then some conditional rendering if the game is over um, i show the game over um, overlay so that is basically that simple you just have two functions in a component one is the create function that is called whenever the component is created uh, and then there is an update function uh, that you can trigger yourself whenever you need so basically i'm just triggering this function with this message and then passing in the event um, that gets here and then I get the event which is uh, already populated uh, so this is a keyboard event it knows it because I have defined the message here the message type there so that is basically um, all is there too um, pretty simple uh, to me it looked pretty natural since uh, I'm I'm pretty familiar with react so it looks pretty uh, pretty interesting to me how how simple it is and how closely it, it is uh, uh, it follows the react practices so yeah uh, by the way this uh, i have deployed this application um, so if you want to go visit that app and then play the game for whatever reason uh, i'll just uh, leave the uh, link in the description so you can just go and spend a couple of minutes playing this and actually uh, see the performance for yourself um, i don't think so it, it it is that big of a grid but it's still impressive uh, like writing rust for the front end code and uh, being able to render it so yeah so that is it uh, and uh, i'll meet you guys with another interesting project and this time i'm planning a lot more videos with uh, in-depth uh, tutorials for building different projects so I hope you guys uh, like this one and uh, stay tuned for